Hello, I'm Ron Lucka, and this is a series of models, part two, Phillipsburg to Easton. Charles Sickgraves was the first mayor of Phillipsburg, New Jersey, when the town incorporated in 1861. Sickgraves was instrumental in getting the Belvedere and Delaware Railroad to run through Phillipsburg and up to the Warren County seat at Belvedere, New Jersey, 12 miles north of Phillipsburg. He was a man with many connections and had many friends in the state capital. His training as a lawyer and business sense made him well known. Sickgraves lived in this home at 59 South Main Street. This structure was demolished for a parking lot in 1994. By the early 1870s, the Belldale Railroad was absorbed by the Pennsylvania Railroad's far-flung system. Phillipsburg had two Belldale roundhouses. This is a view looking over the Jersey Central Bridge of the early roundhouse. It had a man-powered turntable. The carpenter shop is to the right, and a Belldale Express is headed south on the main line. Due to lack of space, the roundhouse is molded in four stalls. The prototype had over a dozen stalls. This photo shows the second roundhouse location with its 75-foot motorized turntable. A Class L1282 just fits in the 75-foot turntable. This photo was taken in 1948. By 1961, the roundhouse was demolished. This photo looking high north over the Delaware River shows the roundhouse area in 1963. At the bottom is Route 611 and the Delaware Canal. The lower yard was called Kent Yard, and the upper yard is where the roundhouse once stood, next to the Tippet and Wood Iron Fabricating Factory. In the middle is the filled-in remains of the Morris Canal, which the town of Phillipsburg used as a city dump for many years. At left is Mount Parnassus. The houses in the center were demolished in 1960. The Lehigh Valley Main Line runs across the middle of the picture. At the upper part of the photo is the Atlantic Cast Iron Factory, once known as Shamoon, or on the Warren Foundry. Just north of Phillipsburg, a passenger train is running south in 1949. Class E6 Atlantics were popular passenger power on Penzi's Bell Dell branch till 1951, when internal combustion power replaced them. One locomotive of this class has been preserved. It's at the Pennsylvania State Museum at Strasburg, PA. It is known as the Lindbergh engine. When Charles Lindbergh returned from France after his transatlantic flight in 1927, a big celebration was planned for him in Washington, D.C. President Calvin Coolidge did the honors, and many newsreels recorded it. Some of the film was flown to New York for processing and planned to be shown in movie theaters. But the Pennsylvania Railroad had a trick up their sleeve. A special engine was prepared with a baggage car containing a processing darkroom. The track was clear all the way to New York while the film was being processed. The films were shown in theaters before the films brought in by planes were done. Number 460 Atlantic will always be known as the train that beat the planes. Here's a good example of what happened to most of our railroad system in North America. Interstate 78 just south of Phillipsburg is under construction in October 1987. Belvedere Delaware tracks are barely visible under the bridge. Trucks can give personal service where railroads can't. The suburbs where millions of homes were built after World War II and pressure from companies like General Motors, Ford and Chrysler forced the federal government to release billions of dollars for the interstate highway system. Thomas the Tank Engine is a real hit with the younger set. Here for the first two weekends in July, Thomas makes his run for a few miles south of Phillipsburg on the old Belle Dell. He gets his face reflected in the mud puddle on the Interstate Delaware River Bridge. Thomas is getting steam up for his run south out of Phillipsburg. The 060 Tank Engine is a porter built in a teens, coal-fired machine. When these two engines get together, it's a full day. 142 is the usual during the summer months and weekends. It's a light Mikado 282 type built in China to American design.
Just to the right of the crowd, the early Pennsylvania roundhouse once stood, demolished in 1910. This is the eastern central of New Jersey Roundhouse at Phillipsburg in 1910. This is the western central New Jersey Roundhouse under demolition in 1936. Both roundhouses were built in the early days, but were not equipped to handle larger engines. An eastbound Lehigh Valley Freight in 1974 passing the Morris Canal Basin. The first three units were the last locomotives purchased by the Lehigh Valley Railroad. Central New Jersey commuter cars are parked in the background. A view of the same location 75 years earlier. This view is vastly different. A blurred image of a train is passing the Lehigh Valley Tower. The passenger station is at left. The Morris Canal Ice House at lower left. Tracks leading to the coal dump are next to it. A westbound Conrail freight in 1983 is passing the Morris Canal Basin. It has been turned into Delaware River Park. Mount Parnassus is in the background. In just seven more years, the tracks will be removed from this area. No known photographs of the first bridge over the Delaware are known to exist. At least, I've never come across any. This drawing shows the double tier bridge over the Delaware River looking to eastern Pennsylvania. The Bell Dell ran on the bottom with the Lehigh Valley Railroad on top. A Bell Dell train is headed south behind the Morris Canal Incline Plain Powerhouse. A lumber raft is headed down under the bridge. Since the whole thing was made of wood, it was subject to rapid deterioration, and it collapsed as two locomotives were crossing it. A hasty repair only temporarily solved the problem. The new Valley Bridge over the Delaware was opened in 1875, replacing the early 1850s bridge. Locomotive Reindeer, built by Mason Locomotive Works, were the first to cross it. Note cover bridge on the Belle Dell crossing the Morris Canal. The earthwork for the lower bridge was quite visible before the turn of the 19th century. It still is today, but much more eroded away. Taken in 1898, looking to Phillipsburg from Easton, all three early bridges are shown. The curved Lehigh Hudson Bridge was built in 1890 and rebuilt in 1907 as trains got bigger, heavier, and longer. The central New Jersey and Lehigh Valley bridges were built about the same time after the double deck wooden bridge was torn down. Note the Pensy Roundhouse on the right, at least a dozen stalls. This aerial view shows the three bridges in 1962. The Delaware Canal is at left. The wooden Easton Dam will be placed in 1968 with a concrete one. The extended piers show where the 1875 bridge was, torn down in 1949. The Lehigh Valley 1901 bridge still exists today. Rails were removed for Conrail in 1990. The Jersey Central Bridge was rebuilt during World War I, partly with government funding. It is the bridge Norfolk Southern uses today. Boats were unloaded from the Delaware and Lehigh canals and locks at the upper left and attached with a cable to cross the river where they drifted to the Morris Canal entrance, just below the eastern side of the Jersey Central Bridge. Lehigh Valley Railroad crack train, the Apollo freight train that is, eastbound crossing the 1901 Delaware River Bridge. These are GP-38s that came to the Lehigh Valley in 1971. Lehigh Valley's crack passenger train eastbound in 1949. Note length of passenger train. You could see 10 passenger trains a day at this location on the Lehigh Valley and a corresponding number of passenger trains on the central New Jersey. The Black Diamond stopped running in May 1959.
Jersey Central steam engines outlast Lehigh Valley a few years into the 1950s. You could see 100 trains a day at this location. All that traffic went to the interstate highway system in the latter part of the 20th century. Note coal dump trestle on the right side of the picture between Lehigh and Hudson and Jersey Central bridges. This coal bin supplied C.K. Williams a short distance away. Four General Electric U-boat diesels crossing the Delaware Bridge in 1980. This was in the Conrail era. Note CR lettering on the nose of the lead engine. General Electric labeled these engines universal. Rail fans called them U-boats in reference to the German submarines in World War II. Well, the company didn't like that and eventually changed the designation. Originally a Far East Coast locomotive, this engine was a light Pacific that was crossing the Central Bridge in October 1975 to hook up with Canadian Pacific of George Hart fame 972 for the last steam trip over the Lehigh Valley Railroad before the Conrail takeover on April 1st, 1976. Nickel Pipe Berkshire 765 is no stranger to the Lehigh Valley. Here she had just crossed the bridge into Pennsylvania at the Mount Ida Rock Hut in Easton, PA. Sister engine 759 rode over Jersey Central Rails in the foreground decades earlier in the late 60s. Engine 759 is at Steamtown, Scranton, PA. 765 remains in fan service. A view in 1959, freight train from the roof of the Cuba Brewery. The brewery closed in the spring of 1953. The end of the Cuba Brewery from the Lehigh Valley Bridge in April 1978. Cuba Brewery on display in 1978. Rising floodwaters will soon close the Route 22 bridge during the August 1955 flood, which will stop traffic for almost 24 hours. Note the car on the left, a brand new 1955 Chevy. Two hurricanes, one right after the other, in August 1955 caused the greatest flood ever recorded in the Delaware and Lehigh River valleys. The night of August 18, 19, Saw floodwaters cut the Northampton Street Bridge in half. When the sun rose in the morning, the damage was visible. Downriver, the Allen H. Bridge, Lehigh and Hudson that is, was spared the damage as the free bridge upriver took the damage. Note grade on bridge. The water on the Phillipsburg side is already three feet deep. Here we are looking to the Phillipsburg from the roof of the Hotel Easton shortly after the floodwaters receded. Structure at lower left was once a toll house. The Bailey Bridge, slightly outriver from the Free Bridge, was erected by the Army Corps of Engineers and stood while the Free Bridge was repaired. Automobiles used the Bailey Bridge for almost two years. Four years before this car was built, the water was 60 feet deep at this location. Cars from the 50s had jet planes models mounted on their hoods. And this car was no exception. Two chrome figures were mounted on the fenders. 1959 was the height of the tail fan craze, and GM cars had the greatest of them all. The rumor was that they lifted off at 90 miles an hour. I can attest this was entirely false. Jet planes had a big effect on cars in the 1950s. Here are the Memorial Day celebration. A 1959 Cadillac sits on Front Street in Easton, PA. It had the wildest tail fins of all. Looked like a combination between a rocket ship and a jet plane. Every Memorial Day, Phillipsburg and Easton has a memorial parade honoring war dead. Here in 1959, the parades met for a ceremony. The mayors of each town meet, followed by a river reef drop and a gun salute. These weekend warriors look like they need some position training. During the 1950s and 60s, the Delaware Joint Toll Bridge Commission really did a great job in lighting up their bridges during the Christmas season. 
They are still lit up around the holidays, but not as elaborate as this. This was taken in 1960. Here in 1982, the first joint Halloween parade between Easton and Phillipsburg has the Phillipsburg band marching across the free bridge into Easton. Note house above bridge. I'm holding the Victorian house model. Probably the original was built at the beginning of the 20th century. Only a few touches need to be added to this view of Phillipsburg from high over the free bridge. This threesome got together at Walters Park in Phillipsburg to discuss local history and left the Phillipsburg historian Ronald Weinkoop, author of five books about the forks of the Delaware area. Sadly, Ron passed away in 2015, taking many history facts with him. On right is William McKelvey, who had tried so hard to get his state transportation be built at Phillipsburg, but state legislatures would not finance it. Painting commissioned by Bill McKelvey about canals, railroads, and trolley lines. In our next video, part three, we will take a look at the Eastern PA. Future videos will travel up the Lehigh River Valley, stopping at historic places along the way.